Okay, we're going to try this for the about the third time. Um, we're looking at lateral area and surface area for prisms and cylinders. Okay, um, we're going to start with a prism. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go right into an example. I'm going to forget all that beginning stuff there. Yeah, I better do it. Here we go. Let's start with a triangular prism. And then we'll do some hidden lines back here. So it's a triangular prism because the two bases are triangles. All right, so a triangular prism. Uh, we have lateral faces, which are the sides, no bases. So in this case, the lateral faces would be the three rectangular sides of this prism. A lateral edge um, are all of the verticals that are connecting the bases. So the edges connecting the bases. So just lateral edges. A right prism here right is going to mean 90 degree angle. When the lateral edge makes a 90 degree angle with the base that means it's standing up perpendicular to the floor that makes it a right prism. So a right prism the lateral edges are perpendicular to the base. And if they're not perpendicular, if it's leaning, that's called an oblique prism. So the lateral edges not perpendicular to the base. And then the altitude is the perpendicular distance between the bases. And that is the height. of the prism. So in this case, the distance between the triangles is the height. Now if I was to draw this triangular prism on its side, the height is still this perpendicular distance. So think of the bases as the top of your head and the bottom of your feet. So just like you, even when you're laying down, if they're going to say how tall are you, they're going to measure from your head to your feet. So it can be standing up. It's the distance between the triangles. If it's laying down, the height is still the distance between the triangles. So let's move into actually finding lateral area and surface area. So if we take uh, this prism here, we'll go with number one. Uh, let's look at, let's say this was an isosceles triangle here, where the base, the triangle was four, four, and let's go five here. 
And then the height, let's go 10. So if we look at the net for that prism, we have the three rectangular sides. So I'll start with that front rectangle, which is 5 by 10. If you look at this next rectangle, all of the rectangles are going to be 10 high, but now this one is uh, a distance of 4. So this next rectangle is a 4 by 10. And then the one over here is also a 4 by 10. And then we would have our two triangles on there. So it would all fold up and then the two fours would match, the fours would match, and you'd make that triangular prism. So we're going to do lateral area and surface area by just looking at the areas of the pieces and then we're going to come up with those shortcuts. So the lateral area is only the area of the rectangular sides, no bases. So the sides only. And since they're all rectangles, a rectangle is just base times height. So we've got a 4 times 10 plus a 5 times 10 plus a 4 times 10. So that's 40 plus 50 plus 40 for a total of 130 square units. Okay, that's not bad. So if you ever forget these formulas, you just know that, oh, lateral area is just the area of all the sides. The sides are rectangles, base times height. Surface area is all of the lateral area, plus now we have to add on two bases. And those bases are the triangles. Well, the lateral area we've already done, 130. I'll just substitute that in. I don't have to recalculate that again. Plus, I've got two, in this case, my base is a triangle. And if you look on your sheet, a triangle, now that I'm at school, base times height divided by two. So I'll just go BH divided by two. Well, if you look at this, we're gonna, the twos are gonna end up canceling out, but I need the base and height of the triangle only. This height here is only referring to the triangle. It is not referring to this height of the prism, so you have to be very careful. I did put an H on here, but that is not the height of the triangle that I need to find the area of the triangle. So just be careful on that. The height I need is this height. I've got the bases, 5. I just need this height. And uh, we're going to have to do a little work off to the side. We're going to do a little Pythagorean theorem to get that. Uh, if I know this side is 5, when I draw in this, it hits a midpoint, so this is 2.5. So it's going to be leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So off to the side, we'll do that. So pick up a calculator. That'll be 4 squared is 16. We'll be subtracting the 2.5 squared. And then we're going to be square rooting that. So I'm not showing all the work for that at this point of the year. Hopefully you can just do that all in a calculator. And now I see that my height after all of the algebra is 3.12. So now I just have to substitute. I'm going to cancel my 2's out. The base is 5 and the height of the triangle is 3.12. So 3.12 times 5 plus the 130, 145.6. So we could just go all the way through and not have formulas here, but um, there are some streamlined formulas that we're going to throw onto our little note sheet here. I'm going to continue this down. Just a little shortcut we can 
put on here. So, the lateral area of a prism. I want you to look at this line of work we had here. Um, you notice all three of these, they all had a 10. They all got multiplied by that height. And then we had a 4, a 5, and a 4. Well, if we do some factoring, and I basket factor out that 10, or take the 10 out, and you don't have to write this down, I just want to show you right here. I'm going to take the 10 out. If I take the 10 out of this, that leaves me with a 4. Taking the 10 out of here, it leaves me with a 5. And taking the 10 out of here, it leaves me with a 4. Well, if you look at what's left here, 4 plus 5 plus 4, 4 plus 5 plus 4, that's just the perimeter of that triangle multiplied by the height of the prism. So right there is where our formula comes from. The lateral area can be found quickly by multiplying the perimeter of the base, multiply that by the height of the prism. So we say LA is equal to pH. That's our simple formula for it. And then SA is just the LA plus two base areas. Big B is the area of a base. So we will add those formulas to our card. So this is the prism section. And if you want to draw yourself a little sample, you can. The L, we're going to be um, having three formulas in here eventually. So leave room for a third, vol we're going to be doing volume here after we're done with areas. And eventually, in a couple of days, volume will be coming. So we'll leave that. Okay. So, what's next? Another, let's do the, the second prism example. Let's go with number two. It's got a little large there. And I'm not going to do the hidden lines because we can see it on the top there. Got a little. Okay, angle that a little bit. There we go. It's a little better. Okay, here's what we know. Let's go um, height of 10 again because that's an easy number to work with. Let's go with an edge length of 6. And with those two numbers, you're going to be able to find lateral area and surface area. And we are going to use the formulas. So the lateral area, and this is a regular hexagon here. Regular, oh, I didn't want to write that in there. Regular hexagon. So the lateral area is the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. I'll do the perimeter of the base down here. Well, we've got a hexagon, that's six sides, and the distance is, oh, maybe I want to change that, but not just, let's go five here. Again, five. So I've got six sides of five. So the perimeter. It's going to be 30. And the height we can see is 10. So the lateral area is 30 times 10. So for 300. Or it's just the area of each rectangle added up. Surface area is LA plus 2 hexagons. Go with that. Okay, the LA is 300 plus 2, and a hexagon is a regular polygon, and the formula for a regular polygon is one half apothem times perimeter. So we're back to this thing again. So 2 times one half AP. Well, perimeter we've got, the apothem we're going to have to find. So we'll do a little work off to the sides. So we can substitute that in there. 
So that opossum, that's why I didn't want to write in here earlier, comes in right here. It's this distance right here. So there's our opossum. I did switch this to two, uh, 2.5, so it's different than the other notes we did. But um, remember, what we've got to do is find this angle up here and then we can do some trig. So think about this hexagon being divided up, this central angle, remember it's 360 degrees all the way around there. We're dividing that into six triangles. That is 60 degrees. So the whole angle is 60. This line cuts it in half to 30. So I've got a 30, 60, 90 here. And if you remember the poster in the room on the 30, 60, 90, the short leg is one, the hypotenuse is double, and the long leg is the short leg times the square root of 3. Well, my short leg is 2.5. All I've got to do is multiply by square root of 3. So the apothem is 2.5 square root of 3. Or you can do trig. If we look, we're standing at the 30. Opposite and adjacent is tangent. So you could set up tan 30 equals 2.5 over the apothem do cross products and you'll get the decimal equivalent to that. And then it'll be uh, 2.5 2, go clear all that. 2.5 divided by tan 30. I'm going to be good. I'm in the right mode. 4.33. And if I do 2.5 square root of 3 I get the same value. So either way, you can use trig or you can use that shortcut triangle. But now we're ready. 300 plus, here the twos are going to cancel again. The apothem we just figured out was 2.5 square root of 3. And then multiply that by the perimeter. It's the same perimeter of 30. Calculator, 300 plus 2.5 square root of 3 times 30, 429.90. Okay, uh, we are going to do cylinders today also, and it's pretty simple, so we'll move on to cylinders. As I can find my notes. Right here. All right, cylinder. So remember what the net for a cylinder looks like. The body of it is a big rectangle. And then with the two circle bases. And then we get our height. So this is the distance between the circle bases. That's our height. If we want to find the, the lateral area, which is the area of this rectangle, I need to know this distance. Well, if you think about it, this straight distance is the part that curls around here. This straight distance is equal to the circumference of this circle. It's the distance around the circle. So this is circumference of a circle. And if you have your sheet, circumference is pi d or 2 pi r. I prefer pi d. So to get the area of this rectangle, we multiply pi d times by h. So the lateral area of a cylinder is pi dh. And then the surface area will be that lateral area plus two circles added on. And the area of a circle, we can do, it's always going to be a circle on a cylinder, so it's the area of a circle is pi r squared. We would need to know that. So there's our two formulas there. And we'll add those to the card. So you're going to need to know height, 
in radius. So the LA pi dh SA is LA plus 2 pi r squared. Okay, let's look at uh, one example here and we'll call it good. Let's say this is our cylinder here. Let's go 2 and 5. And finding the lateral area and surface area. So pi dh. I need to know the diameter of the circle. I can see I gave you that as 2. Height of the cylinder is 5. That will be 10 and float the pi to the end. I'm going to leave it exact at 10 pi. Surface area is LA plus 2 pi r squared. That was 10 pi plus 2 pi. The radius, the radius would be 1. 1 and 1 is giving me the 2. So that's 10 pi. 1 squared is 1. Multiplying by 2 is 2. Adding 10 pi to 2 pi, that's going to give me 12 pi. Okay, I'm going to call that good.